Ah, one, two, three, four. We're grappling with the Ten Commandments and we're talking about virtue today. Virtue is kind of a, I don't know if it's a good word or a bad word these days. Half the time people like it, half the time they don't. But I think one of the things that's good to think about when we think about the Ten Commandments is that it's not, it's not only prohibition. Uh, in fact, when we look at Luther's uh, instructions on the Ten Commandments, we're going to see that oftentimes he'll have a do not and a do, so that we fear and love God, so that we do not, etc., 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 but that we do. do, 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 do. So we have a negative and we have a positive. We have a, f- a thing that's forbidden and a thing that's asserted. Now, the Ten Commandments are always showing us our sin, but I think in a lot of ways there's a, there's a way that we can think of the virtues uh, that the Ten Commandments give to us, the things, the positive things that they would have us uh, attain to or uh, pursue. Uh, you, you know, it's not just a, a matter of the fence that keeps you in. Uh, it is, you know, the Ten Commandments are a fence that hedge us in, and that's why we talk about, about trespasses and stuff like this. But that at the center of the commandments, there's something that we are to go after, so it not only keeps us from going too far, but that there's something, there's a goal, there's a, there's a, uh, an object that we are to pursue. And so I'd like to consider that list uh, very briefly today. So uh, let's start with the second table of the law. And by the way, for more on the two tables of the law, see the next video that's coming out next week and consider what these things give to us. The fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother, which teach us to respect those in authority, is really the virtue of respect or honoring, that we are honorable people. And this is something that we're pursuing as opposed to rebellion. The fifth commandment, you shall not murder, gives us the virtue of compassion that we are people who care for other people. The sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery, teaches us the virtue of chastity. The seventh commandment, you shall not steal, which teaches how we deal with money, uh, and it forbids both on the one side laziness and on the other side greed, teaches us the virtue of generosity. The eighth commandment, uh, you shall not bear false witness, teaches us to be truthful. Uh, And I think even maybe a little bit more than that, it also teaches us a degree of kindness. And the uh, ninth and tenth commandments teach us to be content, and they teach us to be thankful. Now, this is the the positive things uh, that are so helpful, especially when we're teaching uh, these to our children, that the that these uh, are uh, should be the marks of our life uh, as a good neighbor. The things that the Lord, uh, the things that the Lord would have us to do. Now, when it comes to the first table of the law and how it is with God, it is difficult to think about virtue. I mean, we do, we can talk about godliness uh, as a virtue, but something different is going on here. It's in the first three commandments that really the Lord is shaping us up and standing us up before Him. And so, I'm not sure we would call these virtues, but here's, I think, what the commandments are asking us to pursue. the The first commandment is that we are Christian. In other words, that we have faith, that we fear God, that we love God, and most especially, that we trust God. The second commandment, which teaches us to use the Lord's name rightfully, means that we pray. I suppose you could say we are prayerful, although I'm not sure I like that adjective, but just that we pray. And that the third commandment is that we hear God's word, and especially that we delight in his word. Now these, um, you know, oftentimes when we, when we think of the commandments, uh, we're thinking about the do not. But I think this uh, is good to reflect on the do and the things that as Christians we are pursuing, that we want to live a chaste and decent life, that we want to be respectful and honoring, that we want to be generous and truthful and kind and, all, and we want to delight in the Lord's word and we want to pray. Now, of course, these commandments, because they demand this, they will always show us our sin. They will always show us how we fail to do these things. And I think perhaps the more we try to do them, the more we see our own failure. 
And this is why the law is always accusing us and teaching us to repent. That this, these virtues that the Ten Commandments require, uh, are really the righteousness that Jesus has in his own life and in his death, and it is the righteousness that he gives to us by faith. So that while we pursue these, we fail, but we rejoice the whole time that Christ has us. So there's the positive side and the virtue of the Ten Commandments. Where's the cheap promotional page? Here it is. You guys are all signed up for this conference, right? Look, it's Premier. Premier. 